we're going to talk about the film. Please welcome writer director Peter Hedges. True story. I opened up, and I had all these. I'm sure you have this too. 
all the ideas, all the things you dreamed of, oh, this could be something, sketch this, idea 17, idea 31. I opened a file on my computer, found this thing for notes I've made many years earlier. It's called Pieces of April. Um, it was inspired because I'd met this uh, actress on the subway and I didn't know how to ask for her phone number. It was long before I met my now wife, a long time ago. And I said, um, uh, I'm a playwright, and if you're ever in anything, send me a, send me a flyer. So I come see it. And she did. She sent me a year later a flyer saying, and in this letter she said, uh, my first year in New, uh, New York is really hard, and I, my friends and I borrowed an apartment, we went to cook in Turkey, and then the oven didn't work. And I, that was a great idea. So I've made some notes about this. I told some people about it. They said it's just a sketch. But then, Cut to many years later, I open up this file after my mom's had this hard conversation with me, and I'm reading the notes, and about the fourth page of the notes, it's a, you know, the writer's question, why is she cooking the turkey? And it's because her mother has cancer. And I called my mom, I said, Mom, you're not gonna believe this. I found this thing about this woman, girl, who's cooking April, da 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 turkey. And she said, oh, that's not like one you're supposed to make. And the last time my mother ever went out into the world, two weeks before she passed, in Iowa, she went um, to different shops looking for ceramic turkeys. And the ceramic turkeys being used in the movie are ones that she found on the last time out. So I wish she'd seen the movie, but it's my, it's not about her. Um, she was very different from Joy, Patty Carson's Joy. <laughs> <laughs> so you hear about that? But anyway, that, um, that's that. And then, and then basically we tried three times to set it up for $6 million and we kept losing the funding. But Gary Lennick, the great, late, great Gary Lennick had started something called Indigent and they made 10 films, um, uh, digital films with like Sony PD 150s, I mean, not even digital, not even high def, obviously, as you can see. But, um, you know, it just gave you a small amount of money, $100,000, we shot it in 16 days. And uh, here we are.
what we were experiencing through the day of shooting this remarkable, beautiful piece of art. Um, we were, we were, we had no amenities, we had no accoutrements, we had nothing. We were all stuck where we were. We were changing in gas stations, and and we we had no trailer. I mean, no, we barely even had a church basement. But we had that wagon, that station wagon, and when we finished a scene, John, our producer, would go get us sandwiches, and we'd eat in the station wagon, and we'd throw our lunches away, and we'd start the scene again. <laughs> we just stayed in the jail for all of our bodies, what, 6'10", but he was like stuck in that little, he was stuck in that little, and it was always like we took to the side. <laughs> But we lived every moment of this remarkable um, screenplay, and that's what I, I I was so thankful for because I think it's what gave it its true value in life. And Peter's emotional attachment to it was so true and real and present every single day on that set, and it inspired us. Um, to bring the best of us to this. Uh, and that's why we did it. That's why we did it. So. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, a confession. So I saw Peter outside. I hadn't seen Peter uh, in years. But Peter, when I didn't tell you, I told okay, I flew myself out here. Let me tell you why I flew myself out here. Besides my wife, um, I remember John Lyons and uh, and my agents were trying to explain to me that you need to go to New York, you can read. And I think I had just done one film that hadn't come out yet. And um, I remember them saying, hey, they're going to get you out here on points. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I, now I've got three boys, you know, I have priorities. Um, <laughs> And uh, but my wife said uh, it was almost like that same ticket that was sold to you to get out. Now it's time for you to invest to get back. So <clears throat> I'm here. Uh, that's why I'm here. I read for that. Uh, it was my joy. Um, I heard you talking outside, you guys. And even though you know I live in in the Altadena area in in California. I just heard you guys talking about film and art. And then to to Katie and Patty, like and Oliver, the, the way you guys, your experience carried it. How green I was and just seeing being around a pedigree that made me want to raise my pedigree. So I just want to thank you guys. That's how I feel. thing that you're talking about, this energy, was with the crew as well. I feel like I can feel them invested and being part of it and finding these angles and the sound, everything feels like it's all working. It was that, and working for the story that you want to tell. Yeah, yeah, you know, we, we had no, we had no time. It's a story about running out of time. Um, and uh, I, I want to hold up, um, three people who uh, were particularly impactful who are no longer physically with us. Um, Jerry Winnick, who had this idea for Indigent. He's been, like many of us were, so inspired by the Dog in the 95 films. Um, for me, like the celebration, Tom Spencer's celebration of the Holy Grail films. You know, if I ever were in a position to do what you've done, that would be one of the films I would show. Like, it's just such a gorgeous film. and. Uh, you know, I, when we lost all our money and I came back to Patty and Katie and said, like, you know, how about we get paid like $100 a day? Um, <laughs> how's that sound? <laughs> and, um, we spent that on lunch. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, when, um, you know, every 
every so often, if you, you if you hang them long enough, you, you and anybody who is a part of making anything, theater, music, dance, film, sometimes it aligns where the, you know, one of the things about the way we made this is, like, I remember when people would say, what's Katie Holmes like? And I'd say, she's Sloan Coach. <laughs> you're probably like, what does that mean? And what I mean is that, that there are people who have achieved the level of success that she has achieved who don't remember or are willing still to fly coach. You know, like that capacity to say, oh, I've got, yeah, I'll get on any, I'll get on that plane. I'll, I don't need, I don't need all, of it. I just want to do the work. I don't want to do that work. And that, that just trickled down. So I really want to hold up the memory of Gary Lennon. Uh, Mark Lugolsi, who was one of our great film editors, this was his first film that he did kind of on his own. He worked with everybody. But he went on to cut uh, The Wedding Crashers and Devil Wears Prada and The Blind Side. And, I mean, look him up. It is just the body of work is massive. And he did such, he had such an acute sense of performance and his ability to, you know, really helped me understand what was possible editorially. I just saw his beauty um, all over the place. And then, and lastly, Alice Rond, who played um, uh, Dottie, and, and, and I just thought was just so beautiful in the film. And, and, just, uh, and just, she just lights up the screen and miss her so much. Um, anyway, so yeah, you know, it, it's, um, uh, didn't have really time to rewrite um, or rethink. You know, sometimes we just literally just look at what what's the next thing. What does the script say? Oh, we better do that. I, there are so many times where an act. I remember we were shooting that wonderful scene where we um, pull off the side of the road, and it was the, it was your Oscar clip. And why why I love it is that clip. You know, cost like you know, like what the craft services budget on like the cold mountain was for a day. Like, like our whole show. I think your Oscar campaign costs more than the movie. My <laughs> dress, <laughs> my underwear, my but, hair, but my, my <laughs> ear, <laughs> way more yeah. than the movie. It's yeah. true. And, and that day, That's that day of shooting that scene, the sun was going down, and it was one of the days where I, you, you ever had this experience where you're like, I have a vision for this scene, you know. Guess what? Director has arrived. Watch this. And I'm pitching out what it's going to be, and it's this, and it's this, and I've become like in four days, like I'm, like I think I'm, I don't know, Stanley Kubrick or something. <laughs> and all of our fans are going, dude, people, can we talk? What are you doing? What's up, dude? Cut here, cut here. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Dude, dude, stop. Stop. And I said, guys, just trust the scene. Trust me. Actors, get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> and I said, what does that look like? He said, just put it down. We needed the overpass, too, because of the light. Yeah. Remember we needed the yeah, overpass? Yeah, we had to use the overpass so because just, of the light. You get us in the, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. That beautiful scene, one of my favorite scenes in the movie is the moment when Patty as Joy sees the young girl in the bathroom. And that scene, we it's the only scene we reshot because the, the guy in the restaurant was so mad that we were holding up his bathroom for an hour <laughs> that we had to kind of move on. But the scene was one of those scenes that when you read it, it was brilliant. Like when you read it, you went, oh, that's such a great scene. We started to film it. And it's hard to explain what we were shooting in that tiny first bathroom. And you hear this voice, and it's this disembodied voice, and the door opens. And the scene did not, it wasn't a performance, and her performance is amazing. It was amazing in every 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 day. But the, the way the scene was structured didn't work. I remember Cammy Riker was our DP, Diane Dreyer was our script supervisor, and I literally, I just went, help, help, what are we going to do? I was shaking. I was like, this is the scene of the movie. It's got to work. And the young woman who played the girl was a family friend and her daughter, and I was like, doesn't work, the scene doesn't work. And Diane said, What if, what if she 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 she's wearing tights? What if her tights are down and she has to pull her tights up? I'm like, I can I cannot go 
to my friend and say, hey, your daughter's tight. So, I think you can. I think that's fine. So I went and I said, hey, this is an idea. We want to see it'll be done very, very tastefully. And, and, but that idea, you know, that idea came out of trusting and going like, it's not working. We have to make it work. And, and I, you know, I can literally go through every scene of the movie. If you want to play it again, skip the scene. I can take you through the scene and go like, oh, this person saved me here. This was saved here. Patty did something in the performance I couldn't have imagined. How Katie turned that into something. So it's that wonderful sense of being surprised and moved and basically just trying to keep up with these exquisite people and just make a safe enough space and hope that we're filming as much as we can so that it will cut together and sometimes sometimes it works. And in this case, it, it did. All right, that was a long answer. <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> I really want to hear a see from each of you too that pops out that has a memory attached anything that still thinks to you but i also want to mention that the cinematographer of his three daughters is sam levy who's the feed operator yes. on this oh, sam yeah oh, wow it's just a, oh. it's a, a total coincidence that yes. i was telling him and i was like oh you know i was there and oh and he was he was so great tammy Riker was our dp and sam um who's gone to shoot lady bird and Many and Tammy's had a great career too. They're both amazing. Yeah, yeah, but he also said that this was this was the, one of the experiences of his lifetime as well. So just pass that on. But yeah, please tell me. <laughs> well, when you can't pay people, they better have a good time. <laughs> it's the least you can do. <laughs> and it's true. But yeah, please tell me. Derek, do you have? comes to mind that when you were coming? Oh, um, you know what? I, I love being on that scooter. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm serious. Like, I, I haven't tried to convince my wife to give me one, but um, uh, you know, I, I think to be, to be fair, uh, my younger brother sitting next to me, and I, I said, I think this was the first time I watched it with my eyes open. Because being in a you know in the theater and, and, and watching people watch you was an experience for me. And like sometimes shaking and nerve and just trying to figure that out. But it was the first time I sat there and I just I just enjoyed the experience. So um, Man, I, 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 I have so many. I think my favorite is like, watching Patty, you're something else. You know what I mean? Like, like you, watching you and Oliver. Uh, my favorite times were like in the dressing room, I throw Peter, you know, uh, Oliver getting dressed, and, you know, the, the space is this small, and, you know, I, I, I try to give him his privacy by turning 45, and then I turn around, I see his legs, and then I turn and he sees mine, and you know, I, I just, to me, what stands out is the fact that it was a family coming together, cohesive. And my favorite was seeing you emotionally involved, and I, you can't manufacture that, and I haven't had so many of those experiences since then, so thank you. Yeah. Because every day, and, and, and you know, it's all kind of a, a blur now the shooting, the pot scene. Because I've never smoked pot. I still have never smoked pot. But the night is young. Yeah. <laughs> 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 always playing drug addicts, but I've never done drugs. <laughs> No, but I. But Winter's going wild with the. I remember I was calling the friends, like, how do you really feel when I'm on pop? I gotta go, I gotta go shoot. I was like, how do you really feel when I'm on pop? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it, there were so many moments, and it, 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 each scene and each moment. 
But I do, I have to say to you, the moment when we had that last moment together, hugging you, I will never forget that as long as I live. Never, never.
Yeah. And just uh, because this is the one place where I feel like you all had to just have faith that this is the end because you're not, I mean, I know you're performing and you're, the, you're gathered around the table, everybody's there, but it's only being captured in stills. What was that sensation like for you? Did, was it just, did you have any idea what these frames would be like? Was this something that you saw at the end when you finally saw the finished film? Well, the, the, we, were, we were driving up to the Krispy Kreme location, which was critical, and the car broke down. Um, so the car got towed to Krispy Kreme. And it was dropped, but we lost about three hours um, with that. So we came racing back, and this was Katie and Derek's first day, and Patty and the family's last day, and um, we had about uh, an hour, and um, I'd written it, it was still images, it was photos, it was the images, because it's what we remember, right? I mean, sometimes our memories are the photos we have, or and, and Tammy Riker said, yeah, it, we, can, we can do so, but I also want to film it. I, want to, I, want to have, I think we can go back and forth with live footage. And it was basically, we just brought people in and, and started to do some things. I know I said to Katie, say something. It's one of my favorite moments when you say something to Allison, you whisper to Allison, and she starts to and you touch her shoulder and her, she's so her emotional that you can see that you're in your finger you know, your handprint on her arm. And it, it was, you know, I was, I, honestly, I was just crying through the whole thing. I mean, I, was, I think you guys must have been terrified. It's like, what? It was your first day, and then was like, oh my God! I was just crying through the whole thing. I was sobbing, I'm sorry, I was. I was. But, um, yeah, you know, um, what I didn't know was um, we cut the movie without any score. Um, uh, so I wasn't going to have any score in the movie. And we were just going to use the Pieces of April song by Three Dog Night. It's a very nice song. And um, John Lyons was like, no, we need a score. And I said, no, 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 no. Got to work with that score. Got to work with this. No, we need a score. And I said, OK, well, I'll, I'll score the movie if I can get my favorite musician at that moment to score it. That was my deal. And he said, who's that? And I said, Stephen Merritt of the Magnetic Fields. So we brought Stephen Merritt. You guys know anything about Stephen Merritt. He's a genius. And he's very, he's very dry. Very, oh, oof. I mean, no coward in him would have been like the best friend. And he's like, oh, yeah. And he comes and sees the movie. He's a little guy with this huge voice. And he says, I love the movie. There should be more, and 
they have their opinions that for me it feels pretty feels like that's where I was supposed to be. So. Those those people are wrong. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna carry that with me for the rest of my life. I, d I do want to say uh, for those of us who have been in this process of losing people um, that we love, that this uh, this is an extremely helpful film, and I'm so grateful. I'm grateful to Luke, Patricia Clarks, and Katie Holmes for the edges. Thank you so much for being here. For the <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for coming.